Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Subnautica Below Zero, shall we? So I always like to check out my inventory before I go anywhere, see where we're at. So we got fins, we got an O2 tank, and what are we working toward? Let's take a look at our blueprints to see what it is we want to make. I'm just going to kind of clear out some uh, indicators that we've got stuff that's new. And we've made um, the knife. We've made the scanner. We haven't yet made the repair tool, but we need sulfur for that. We've made the O2 tank, and we've made the fins. So at this point, we can really um, start focusing on just exploring and trying to find the other sea glide uh, fragment because this is really going to help us get around further. So now, um, oh, well, my, I should have emptied out my inventory, but honestly, we have so much space right now. We are okay. We want to just keep looking around and scan everything we can. And what's this right here? That's ah, just glowing stuff but what we do find is well let's get this titanium is great and here is some more ribbon plant which we will take we need the violet bow scan it up bam take this and let's see anything else amazing down here oh, bladder fish is certainly good and Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. This is true that we only have 30 seconds, but it's so luxurious now that we have a tank. And we can get around just a little bit faster with our fins. I can go all the way back here and make it into oxygen. our base just like this. So I'm going to open the storage. And I'm going to start dumping in things that we don't need at the moment. Uh, this food... Basic resources. There we go. I don't need to carry two nutrient blocks. And uh, I really don't need two water. Everything else I can just put in there and that looks just fine. I'm going to take um, three bladder fish out and just make them into water while we're here. Um, we could cook the bladder fish... So if you get a cooked food, you can cook it, but you don't ever want to cook bladderfish. You always want to turn it into water, unless, you know, for some reason you were starving. But generally, it's this is water. This is the best way for us to get water early. And uh, I'm going to put away all but that, and I'll take a peeper, and I'm going to show you right here. Um, you could see that my radio for food is slightly going down, so I'm going to go to sustenance. And um, we can cure food as well if you have salt so if you cure food with salt it will make it into like jerky basically and it will last longer it won't go bad as fast um, but we're just going to cook this arctic peeper and as we cook it we get um this in return which is 32 food and five water now you have to eat it right away to get the full benefit bink just like that and then I'm going to drink water to top ourselves off on all of our biometric radials. And let's go explore. Looks like the sun is setting. So what we're looking for just... Um, well, I'll take a bladderfish. I forgot to scan it. Um, what we're looking for would be the sea glide fragment. Oh, here we go. Yeah, can we scan you? Oh no, I guess that wasn't what they were telling me to scan. There must have been something else there. There it is, right here. So this is what you're looking for, just down on the ground. A sea glide that's all beaten up. You scan it, and then once you get three, we now get the blueprint for a sea glide. And this is a major upgrade for us, um, because we need it to move around quickly, because still, we don't have a lot of oxygen. Heading back to the old Oxygen. escape pod, and we're good. Okay, so let's first um, 
I'm just going to turn this bladder fish that we got into water. Pretty much always doing this. Water is just so good. You need a lot of it. And um, now I'm going to go to the blueprints. And we've got the sea glide. I'm going to pin it. So what do we need to make this? We need battery, lubricant, copper wire, and titanium. So let's go into our storage and see what we've got. Well, we definitely have lubricant because we made some. We have titanium. And um, we need copper wire. So we'll get copper for that. And then we need um, ribbon plant and copper to make a battery. I think this will actually do it. Let me go to the fabricator. Let me go to resources. We're going to go to electronics. Copper wire. Oh, no, it takes two copper for copper wire. So we made the copper wire, but to make the battery, we need one more copper ore. So let's see if I actually have that. I don't. So we're going to need to go break some chunks to get one more copper. But that's okay. That's pretty easy. Oh, you know what? I lied. I said we made a flashlight. We certainly did not make a flashlight yet. And um, did I pin that? Let's do that because a flashlight is very useful. Oh, we need glass. Okay. Glass is something else we can make with quartz. So what we're doing right now is just looking for exactly something like this. Oh, and we got what we needed. Copper. Perfect. So now we can go back and we can create the sea glide. We're going to... Um, you don't need a flashlight as much if you have a sea glide, but it's still nice to have because the sea glide itself has one. So now we can go here, resources, electronics, and we can craft a battery with two ribbon plant and a copper ore. And then we can go to deployables and sea glide and make it right here. And we got it is a personal transportation device used for high-speed free diving contains a built-in light and map so she tells you what it is and it's great and we're really happy to get it now i'm going to clear this off of blueprint because we made it but we do want a flashlight but let's talk about the sea glide now i can exit the base and i could just push you notice how um i'll pause it really fast down here We've got our five circular buttons, which correspond to numbers one through five on the keyboard. And the sea glide is right down here. The green bar to the right of the button indicates the battery charge. Same thing for the scanner. So everything that takes um, a battery has this green bar to tell you how much juice the battery has left. And if it becomes depleted, then you need to swap out the battery. And you can do that by just making a fresh battery and then um, I will show you. I'll select the item, and then you push F. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not F, R. And R allows you to change the battery. It brings up this battery screen, and you kind of just, um, with R, you use the mouse wheel to, like, load or unload the battery or select a new battery. But anyway, I'm just going to um, push number four, and now we've got the Sea Glide. Now, you see how it has a map? It's like a topographical map that's in front of the Sea Glide. I don't like this myself. So I always just push F to turn it off, and then you can push right-click to turn on the flashlight. Now, this will use more batteries if you have the flashlight on, but I like it at night. And we can just ride around, and this is so much faster. Okay, we got some titanium. So we're going to start flying around with our Sea Glide, exploring in places wherever we want to go. Um, ribbon plant, sure. Reasonable. And we're trying to get... Here we go. Oxygen. Okay. No problem. Back down we go. We need copper so we can make a flashlight. There it is. And there's some quartz. And let's just break whatever's over here. There's nothing wrong with collecting a ton of stuff. In fact, it's kind of like a Subnautica best practice to have way more than you need. Because you never know when you're going to need stuff. And um, it just makes your life so much easier to have a surplus. I'm just flying around, picking up everything that I can. There we go. And where's my base? It's over here. Fishing, by the way, you know, like we were doing before by just left-clicking to grab the fish out of the water like that. 
is so much easier with the sea glide because we move much much faster now we're going to talk about a few things once we get back to base here Okay, and I'm going to just go ahead and um, right-click to turn off my flashlight and then switch to my scanner. Now, from in here, I'm going to open up storage and I'm going to take out another quartz. Um, I have enough ribbon on me. I'm going to open the fabricator. We're going to go to resources. I'm going to go to basic materials, and now we can make glass. So the battery takes glass, and like I was saying, you need quartz. You need two quartz for one glass. I click on this. We got it. Then I'm going to click on electronics. I'm going to make a battery. Ding. And now we can make a flashlight. Now, here's another trick for you, by the way. Um, we have the ingredients right here for a flashlight. If a recipe calls for a battery, you can just pop out a battery that you've been using. Um, and if it has, like, it's empty. It's zero charge. You can use a zero charge battery when crafting, and then the item that it makes will start with full charge. So it's a great way to use dead batteries. So you can save your dead batteries, and then if you're building any kind of equipment, repair tool, whatever it is that takes a battery, you can just pop in that dead battery instead of making a new one for it like we did there. But that's okay. I'm just kind of explaining some tips. Then I'm going to go over here, and um, I can pin the repair tool... Um, because I'm just going to right-click it. I'm going to left-click the flashlight to get this made. Wonderful. And then I'm going to go to personal. And, um, no, what I want would be deployables. And I want a waterproof locker, but I don't have enough titanium on me. So I'm going to open up my storage. And we don't have enough titanium, so we need to get more. So I'm going to go to storage. I'm going to start putting in a bunch of fish here. A bunch of ribbon plants. Things that I don't need to carry at the moment extra water extra water okay great i'm gonna put in the flare too i don't really ever use them i probably should um i just don't use them very often okay and now we're gonna push forward to select our sea glide and just kind of go around again um they still will tell you if they need to be scanned even if you don't have your scanner out but currently i got some copper crazy stuff going on up on the surface, but luckily we're safe down here. Okay, I got four. And I can now go back. Now, also, we can go down to these peepers if we want. I think we need to scan one. Um, I'm just going to hold right click, try to get close to this guy. You see how it remembers some of your progress? Got him. And now we need to get back to our base. We're running out of oxygen, so I'm going to switch to the sea glide to go really fast. I don't have the flashlight on to help with battery usage somewhat. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to use the fabricator. I'm going to go to deployables, and I'm going to go to waterproof locker. It takes four titanium to make this locker, but it's fantastic, and I'll show you why. If you look at our storage on board, it's full. I have one space empty. That's how full this is. I'll put this in here just to demonstrate. Storage full. So if you need more storage, what you want to do is make these waterproof lockers. Now I'm going to push tab, and I'm going to drop this down here. Um, you can also just mouse over and push the number key to bind it to the slot. I'm going to push number three, and then what you want to do here is just right-click, and you'll kind of just send it away, and then the locker just floats here. Now you can go here and adjust the name, um, of the locker, or you can open it like this and um, put stuff inside. So I put one food in here, and I'm going to just close it, and then you can see how if you mouse over it, you can change the name of the locker. I'm just going to left-click. It'll bring up some kind of like, you know, keyboard interface, or it should. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just type right in here. Click on this, and I'm going to call it food. Sorry, I played the previous one on the PS5, and I was used to the PlayStation interface, which brings up a keyboard. But if you're playing on PC with mouse and keyboard, it just says type right here, no problem. Okay, so now we got food. So what I'm going to do is just take out anything that I want for food, all of these fish, and put them in that locker. And start to get organized. 
So I'm going to put all my food out here. So if I need food, it's in here. And now I have more space inside and I can, I could stay organized. Now, um, I kind of went overboard in my playthrough of this and made a ton of these lockers because I was used to doing that from the first Subnautica. But actually, if memory serves, you get the ability to build better storage soon. So don't have to go insane with this because we should be finding stuff um, to create a better habitat and more storage uh, very, very soon in the game. Whereas I think in Subnautica 1, it felt like it took longer to get to that point. I'm going to go to Blueprints. I'm going to turn off the flashlight and leave the repair tool because we've made the flashlight. Um, also, the flashlight, let me go to my inventory. I'm just going to mouse over it and I'm going to push number five so that you can see it's equipped down here. And um, now we have a bunch of tools and we can explore better at night. Okay, so... Once we get established where it's like, okay, we can get water pretty reasonably, we could start swimming a little bit faster, we've built the technology that we have access to, I like to basically just start swimming further and further out from the drop pod and just kind of going in circles that are ever widening around it to get the lay of the land and see if there's anything new that I can discover, any new animals that I need to pick up or scan. Um, you know, any new resources at all. This is a creature egg. Um, I don't really mess with those. However, this is interesting. What's this? It's a frost anemone. Okay. And I'm going to take these items here. Oxygen. Okay. So, so, notice how it says swim to the surface, but there's a big um, iceberg blocking my way. That is something that can happen to you in this game that is surprising if you played the original Subnautica, which where that never happened, basically, unless you were in a cave. You can get under an iceberg and not find the surface if you're not careful. And the thicker the iceberg, the more likely that is to happen. So um, another reason why you got to always kind of be aware of your surroundings so that you don't get yourself stuck under something where you can't get up. And um, it's important to have the sea glide so you could swim out faster. Now, right here, there's another Sea Glide fragment, and I can scan it, but I already know this. So if you scan something that you already know the recipe for, here's the Coral Bridge, I'll scan this too. The game just gives you titanium instead, so it's a nice way to get titanium if you just find a fragment of something that you already have the technology for. So we've got Frost Anemones, and you can see there's more creep vine. The water's kind of getting darker over here some more stuff to scan a bunch of sea glide fragments you're going to find this all the time where the game is just giving you you know fragment after fragment oh here's my buddy let's see if i can get to him oh there's a mean guy over there spraying stuff but this is my dude the, the whole fish Sky, scan this guy up and ding oh we got zapped oh no we're frozen Left click a bunch of times until you're better and then use your sea glide. Run. Okay. So we got frozen. If you get frozen like that, you got to left click to kind of shake yourself out of it and get to the surface. It didn't do actually damage. You see my health. It really didn't hurt us, but it could have killed us because bad. The whole fish did not do that, by the way. That was the other guy or one of the other dudes. All right, and we're just going to keep on swimming around. There's our creep vine. Here's the clusters. So we can scan the sea, creep vine seed cluster. And again, like we already kind of got the information about it because we picked it up but I like to just get as much as I can. Oh, let's check this out. You see this plant right here? This guy, if you go up to it, um, you can just left click to replenish your oxygen. It doesn't completely replenish you, but it gives you um, a big burst. I think 30 seconds, but I might be wrong on that number. But they're really, really nice. And actually, they're generally a clue in this game that they're 
indicating that you might want to stay down here, that you're like of in an area that's of interest. And there are many places in Subnautica Below Zero where you can chain those oxygen plants to just stay underwater for long stretches of time to explore and they're intentional so that's another difference from the first game where you know there's there's brain coral but it, it's not as frequent um, or as much of a you know surge of oxygen as these give and I'm just kind of going around seeing what we can find and here's speak of this and this is another part of Subnautica I'm going to go ahead and replenish my oxygen. Once you start circling around, the next step is to go deeper. How deep can you go? And deeper will find better stuff. However, Warning. Passing 100 meters. as you can see, um, oh, here's some table coral. Scan this up. We need this. Our oxygen will, um, I'm going to slice this with right click and pick it up. And I'm going to select, oh, look at that. What's that? Sounds like a distress call. Transmission of unknown origin. Source of transmission depth calculated at approximately 200 meters. Okay. So I use the oxygen plant to um, get a burst of oxygen. And the deeper you are, if you don't have the right technology to be deep, then your oxygen rate, of like your consumption rate, just goes way up. Now these... Um, guys that replenish your oxygen you see how it curls up and closes that means it's like it needs to refresh but it will eventually recharge and allow you to use it again oh there's my monkey buddy let me see if i can scan the sea monkey got him sweet okay so um we got the sea monkey scanned and we got the distress call signal so what happens in this game too is like periodically, either through time passed or through areas explored and depth reached, you will get new clues, new places to go, new things to do. Um, so here's a bunch of these sea monkeys. You can see them all over the place. And there's a sea glide fragment. But then if you look right here... There's a hole, but inside the hole, you know, there's some oxygen that we can use. And, whoa, we can go really, really deep right in here. And it kind of changes into a green area. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay. Swim. Okay. So, I, I hope you heard those explosions behind us. Um, just like in the first Subnautica, there are these certain fish that live on the cave walls or these sea creatures that live on the walls of caves and they come at you and they like kind of do like a suicide explosion to I guess protect their nest um, and if you're close to them you can take a bunch of damage they make a really obvious noise that you can hear and clue you in that you need to get away from it and we did we got away from it because we were using our sea glide it's the best way to just escape their you know nightmare but um, sometimes what, what I was trying to look at down there that I had to swim away from was we found a sea monkey nest. That right there is a sea monkey nest. And I'm going to show you. When you get close to sea monkey nests, um, I can scan it. Usually, like, part of what they make the nest out of is... Uh, I need to get out of here. In their nest... Of there will be fragments of technology because the sea monkeys are like um, kind of like magpies like they collect any debris that they find and they they use it to make their nest or whatever so you can find good stuff now that nest just had sea glide fragments from what I could tell so nothing new but many of those nests do have new stuff so it's a great place to check uh, for ways to expand our capabilities I'm going to pick up um, some quartz, just be ready for this. Ribbon plant. And just kind of checking things out, moving through. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Where is my home? It's over here. I'm going to go into base. Oh, look at this. Personal log, distress call. 
Who or what is out here calling for help? Didn't sound human. Maybe it's from a remnant of architect technology. In her message, Sam's colleague did say there was something important here. Even if it's just a mimic from one of the more intelligent aquatic specimens, that could be a major find. Or if it's from Altera, it could have bearing on what happened to Sam. I should definitely check it out. So when we come back to the base, we get her making a note about this to give us some information. And if we go to the beacon manager, you can always check to see if they've given us any specific coordinates, but they haven't yet. So what we're going to do is just keep exploring and keep building the technology that we can. We haven't found any sulfur yet um, to build this repair tool, but we don't really need the repair tool too profoundly right now. Now you see how this old frost anemone heart, um, the green bar by it, because it's a food item, it's not indicating its battery charge, but rather its durability. And so this item is degrading over time that we picked up. We can go ahead and eat these, um, you know, if we want. And they're losing their ability to be good, so we might as well just eat them and save them for when we can craft with them. Right now, we can't do anything special with them. So I'm just going to kind of consume and consume, top ourselves off get a little bit of water and I'm going to use the fabricator make um, a couple more waterproof lockers and just start diversifying the nice thing is like I said I wouldn't make more than four of these if I were you um, but you can always just take the stuff out of here and pick these up if you don't need them anymore so it's not the end of the world. Um, if you do, you know, make more than you need. I'm just going to go ahead and put some minerals in here, some ore and stuff. And I'm just going to call this, um, you know, ore. We can get more specific when we have um, more storage. But for now, I'm just kind of, you know, being pretty loose with how I organize these things. I'm going to pick up a peeper and go in here. Just click right here. Click on that and we're going to cook it up. Bam. Jackpot. And I'm going to go into my inventory and we're going to eat this right away. And now we're pretty topped off on all of our indicators. I'm going to go here and I'm going to put in this table coral for later. And we're doing great. So we got the sea glide. You can see its battery does go down pretty rapidly as we use it. We made a flashlight. We've made storage. We got an alien, you know, at least that's what she thinks it is. Some kind of maybe alien distress call. Um, and we are rocking and rolling as we explore further and further away from our initial drop pod in the game. Now... Another thing we can always do is, you know, try to explore and see if there's any place on the surface that we could get if we wanted to. Um, but for now, I think it's best to just keep exploring the ocean and the depths to see if we can find more technology, more clues as to Sam and Altera's presence on the planet. Everyone, I hope you're still finding this series to be useful and fun. Thank you so much for watching. I'll check you in the next one. Take care.